the entered apprentice's lecture. Brother, is there anything between you and me? There is, right worshipful. What is it, brother, pray? A secret. What is that secret, brother? Masonry. Then I presume you are a mason? I am so taken and accepted among brothers and fellows. Pray what sort of a man ought a mason to be? A man that is born of a free woman. Where was you first prepared to be made a mason? In my heart. Where was you next prepared? In a room adjoining to the lodge. How was you prepared, brother? I was neither naked nor clothed, barefoot nor shod, deprived of all metal, hoodwinked, with a cable toe about my neck, or I was led to the door of the lodge, in a halting moving posture, by the hand of a friend, whom I afterwards found to be a brother. How do you know it to be a door, you being blinded? By finding a stoppage, and afterwards an entrance or admittance. How got you admittance? By three knocks. What was said to you within? Who comes there? Your answer, brother? One who begs to have and receive part of the benefit of this right worshipful lodge, dedicated to St. John, as many brothers and fellows have done before me. How do you expect to obtain it? By being free-born and well-reported. What was said to you then? Enter. How did you enter, and upon what? Upon the point of a sword, or spear, or some warlike instrument. Presented to my naked left breast. What was said to you then? I was asked if I felt anything. What was your answer? I did, but I could see nothing. You have told me how you was received, pray who received you? The junior warden. How did he dispose of you? He delivered me to the master, who ordered me to kneel down and receive the benefit of a prayer. Brethren, let us pray. O Lord God, thou great and universal mason of the world, and first builder of man, as it were a temple, be with us, O Lord, as thou hast promised, where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Be with us, O Lord, and bless all our undertakings, and grant that this our friend may become a faithful brother. Let grace and peace be multiplied unto him, through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and grant, O Lord, as he putteth forth his hand to thy holy word, that he may also put forth his hand to serve a brother, but not to hurt himself or his family, that thereby may be given to us great and precious promises, that by this we may be partakers of thy divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. O Lord God, add to our faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, prudence and to prudence, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly love, and to brotherly love. Charity, and grant, O Lord, that masonry may be blessed throughout the world, and thy peace be upon us, O Lord, and grant that we may be all united as one, through Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth for ever and ever. Amen. After this prayer, what was said to you? I was asked who I put my trust in. Your answer, brother? In God. What was the next thing said to you? I was taken by the right hand, and a brother said, Rise up, and follow your leader, and fear no danger. After all this, how was you disposed of? I was led three times round the lodge. Where did you meet with the first opposition? At the back of the junior warden in the south, where I gave the same three knocks as at the door. What answer did he give you? He said, Who comes there? Your answer? The same as at the door one who begs to have and receive, etc. Where did you meet with the second opposition? At the back of the senior warden, in the west, where I made the same repetition as at the door. He said, who comes there? One who begs to have, etc. Where did you meet with the third opposition? At the back of the master, in the east, where I made the repetition as before. What did the master do with you? He ordered me back to the senior warden, in the west, to receive instructions. What were the instructions he gave you? He taught me to take one step upon the first step of a right angle oblong square, with my left knee bare bent, my body upright, my right foot forming a square, my naked right hand upon the Holy Bible, with the square and compass thereon, my left hand supporting the same, where I took that solemn obligation or oath of a mason. Brother, can you repeat that obligation? I will do my endeavor, with your assistance, worshipful. Stand up and begin. Here the oath is repeated, as mentioned before. After repeating this obligation, they drink a toast to the heart that conceals, and to the tongue that never reveals. The master in the chair gives it, and they all say ditto, and draw the glasses across their throats as aforesaid. Now, brother, 
after you received the obligation, what was said to you? I was asked what I most desired. What was your answer? To be brought to light. Who brought you to light? The master and the rest of the brethren. When you was thus brought to light, what were the first things you saw? The Bible, square, and compass. What was it they told you they signified? Three great lights in masonry. Explain them, brother. The Bible to rule and govern our faith, the square to square our actions, the compass to keep within bounds with all men, particularly with a brother. What were the next things that were shown to you? Three candles, which I was told were three lesser lights in masonry. What do they represent? The sun, moon, and master mason. Why so, brother? There is the sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night, and the master mason is lodge, or at least ought so to do. What was then done to you? The master took me by the right hand, and gave me the grip and word of an entered apprentice, and said, Rise, my brother Jachin. Sometimes they show you the sign before the grip and word is given, which is Jachin. It is the entered apprentice's word, and the grip there to belonging is to pinch with your right thumb nail upon the first joint of your brother's right hand. Have you got this grip and word, brother? I have, right worshipful. Give it to your brother. Then he takes his next brother by the right hand, and gives him the grip and the word as before described. The first brother gives him the grip. The second brother says, What's this? The grip of an entered apprentice. Has it got a name? It has. Will you give it me? I'll letter it with you, or halve it. I'll have it with you. Begin. No, you begin first. J.A. Chin. J.A. Chin. It is, right worshipful master. What was the next thing that was shown to you? The guard or sign of an entered apprentice. Have you got the guard or sign of an entered apprentice? He draws his right hand across his throat, as aforesaid, to show the master that he has. After this, what was said to you? I was ordered to be taken back, and invested with what I had been divested of, and to be brought back again to return thanks, and to receive the benefit of a lecture, if time would permit. After what you had been divested of was restored, what was next done to you? I was brought to the northwest corner of the lodge, in order to return thanks. How did you return thanks? I stood in the northwest corner of the lodge, and with the instruction of a brother I said, Master, Senior and Junior Wardens, Senior and Junior Deacons, and the rest of the brethren of this lodge, I return you thanks for the honor you have done me in making me a mason, and admitting me a member of this worthy society. What was then said to you? The master called me up to the northwest corner of the lodge, at his right hand. Did he present you with anything? He presented me with an apron. Which he put on me. He told me it was a badge of innocence, more ancient than the golden fleece or the Roman eagle, more honorable than the star and garter, or any other order under the sun that could be conferred upon me at that time, or any time hereafter. What were the next things that were shown you? I was set down by the master's right hand, who showed me the working tools of an entered apprentice. What were they? The 24-inch gauge, the square, and common gavel, or setting mall. What are their uses? The square to square my work, the 24-inch gauge to measure my work, the common gavel to knock off all superfluous matter, whereby the square makes it easy and just. Brother, as we are not all working masons, we apply them to our morals, which we call spiritualizing. Explain them. The 24-inch gauge represents the 24 hours of the day. How do you spend them, brother? Six hours to work in, six hours to serve God, and six to serve a friend or a brother as far as lies in my power, without being detrimental to myself or family. I come now to the entered apprentice's reasons, but as the ceremony of drinking healths among the masons takes up much of their time, we must stop a little, in order to introduce some of them. The first is, to the heart that conceals, and the tongue that never reveals, then, the king and royal family, and, to all brethren wheresoever dispersed. The pleasures they enjoy, the purity of their sentiments, and the uniformity that always reigns in their assemblies, are far from being tiresome or insipid. I next proceed to the entered apprentice's reasons. Why was you neither naked nor clothed, barefoot nor shod, with a cable toe, or halter, about your neck? If I had recanted and ran out into the street, the people would have said I was mad, but if a brother had seen me, he would have brought me back, and seen me done justice by. Why was you hoodwinked? That my heart may conceal before my eyes did discover. The second reason, brother? As I was in darkness at that time, I should keep all the world in darkness. 
Why was you deprived of all metals? That I should bring nothing offensive or defensive into the lodge. Give me the second reason, brother. As I was poor and penniless when I was made a mason, it informed me that I should assist all poor and penniless brethren as far as lies in my power. You told me you gave three distinct knocks at the door, pray what do they signify? A certain text in scripture. What is the text? Ask, and you shall have, a seek, and you shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. How do you apply this text in masonry? I sought it in my mind, I asked of my friend, I knocked, and the door of masonry became open unto me. Why had you a sword, spear, some other warlike instrument presented to your naked left breast particularly? Because the left breast is the nearest the heart, that it might be the more a prick to my conscience, as it pricked my flesh at that time. Why was you led three times round the lodge? That all the brethren might see I was duly prepared. When you was made an apprentice, why was your left knee bare bent? Because the left knee is the weakest part of my body, and an entered apprentice is the weakest part of masonry, into which degree I was then entering. Here the brethren resume their glasses, and drink a health, sometimes to the Grand Master, at other times to the wardens or other officers, and then proceed. The form of a lodge. Brother, pray what makes a lodge? Right worshipful, a certain number of masons met together to work. Pray what number makes a lodge? Three, five, seven, or eleven. Why do three make a lodge, brother? Because there were three grand masons in the building of the world, and also that noble piece of architecture, man, which are so complete in proportion that the ancients began their architecture by the same rules. The second reason, brother? There were three grand masons at the building of Solomon's temple. Why do five make a lodge? Because every man is endowed with five senses. What are the five senses? Hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and feeling. What are those five senses to you in masonry? Three are of great use to me, viz. Hearing, feeling, and seeing. Of what use are they, brother? Hearing is to hear the word, seeing is to see the sign, feeling is to feel the grip, that I may know a brother as well in the dark as in the light. Why should seven make a lodge? Because there are seven liberal sciences. Will you name them, brother? Grammar, rhetoric, logic, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. Brother, what do those sciences teach you? Grammar teaches me the art of writing and speaking the language taught me, according to the first, second, and third concord. What doth rhetoric teach you? The art of speaking upon any topic whatsoever. What doth logic teach you? The art of reasoning well, whereby you may find out truth from falsehood. What doth arithmetic teach you? The use of numbers. What doth geometry teach you? The art of measuring, whereby the Egyptians found out their own land, or the same quantity which they had before the overflowing of the river Nile, that frequently used to water their country, at which time they fled to the mountains till it went off again, and this made them have continual quarrels about their lands. What doth music teach you, brother? The virtue of sounds. What doth astronomy teach you? The knowledge of the heavenly bodies. Why should eleven make a lodge, brother? There were eleven patriarchs when Joseph was sold into Egypt and supposed to be lost. The second reason, brother? There were but eleven apostles when Judas betrayed Christ. What form is your lodge? An oblong square. How long, brother? From east to west. How wide, brother? Between north and south. How high, brother? From the earth to the heavens. How deep, brother? From the surface of the earth to the center. Why is your lodge said to be from the surface to the center of the earth? Because that masonry is universal. Why is your lodge situated east and west? Because all churches or chapels are, or ought to be so. Why so, brother? Because the gospel was first preached in the east and extended itself to the west. What supports your lodge? Three great pillars. What are their names? Wisdom, strength, and beauty. Who doth the pillar of wisdom represent? The master in the east. Who doth the pillar of strength represent? The senior warden in the west. Who doth the pillar of beauty represent? The junior warden in the south. Why should the master represent the pillar of wisdom? Because he gives instructions to the crafts to carry on their work in a proper manner, with good harmony. Why should the senior warden represent the pillar of strength? As the sun sets to finish the day, so the senior warden stands in the west to pay the hirelings their wages, 
which is the strength and support of all business. Why should the junior warden represent the pillar of beauty? Because he stands in the south at high twelve at noon, which is the beauty of the day, to call the men off from work to refreshment, and to see that they come on again in due time, that the master may have pleasure and profit therein. Why is it said that your lodge is supported by those three great pillars, wisdom, strength, and beauty? Because wisdom, strength, and beauty are the finishers of all work, and nothing can be carried on without them. Why so, brother? Because there is wisdom to contrive, strength to support, and beauty to adorn. Had you any covering to your lodge? Yes, a clouded canopy of divers' colors. How blows a mason's wind, brother? Due east and west. What o'clock is it, brother? High twelve. Call the men off from work to refreshment, and see that they come on again in due time. The entered apprentice's lecture being finished, it is customary for the master to call upon one of the brethren, who can best acquit himself, for the following song, which is always readily complied with song. At the conclusion of the entered apprentice's lecture. Come let us prepare, we brothers that are assembled on every occasion. Let us drink, laugh, and sing, our wine has a spring, here's a health to an accepted mason. Chorus, let us drink, etc. The world is in pain, our secrets to gain, but still let them wonder and gaze on. They never can divine the word or the sign of a free and an accepted mason. Tease this, and tease that, they cannot tell what, why so many great men of the nation should put aprons on, to make themselves one with a free and an accepted mason. Great kings, dukes, and lords have laid by their swords, our mystery to put a good grace on, and never been ashamed to hear themselves named with a free and an accepted mason. Antiquity's pride we have on our side, and it maketh men just in their station, there's naught but what's good. To be understood by a free and an accepted mason. We're true and sincere, and just to the fair, who will trust us on every occasion, mo mortal can more the ladies adore than a free and an accepted mason. Then join hand in hand, to each other firm stand, let's be merry and put a bright face on, what mortal can boast so noble a toast as a free and an accepted mason. While this song is singing they all stand round the table, and when they come to the last verse they join hands crossways in the following manner, the right hand man takes hold of the left hand of his neighbour with his right hand, and the left hand man takes hold of the right hand of his next brother with his left hand, so as to form a chain by so many links and all join in the chorus, jumping violently with their feet on the floor, and shaking their hands up and down, linked together as above, keeping exact time with both. Everyone now talks of what he pleases, and as it is generally half an hour before they proceed to business, those who perhaps have ordered a supper retire into another room, but before they are permitted, the master proceeds to call the men off from work, as it is termed, which is done in this manner, the master whispers to the senior deacon, who sits on his right hand, and says, it is high time to call the men from work to refresh themselves, the senior deacon whispers to the senior warden, and it is communicated from him to the junior deacon, who carries it to the junior warden, he proclaims it openly to the lodge, and sets his column upright, and the senior warden lays his down, which signifies that the junior warden is entrusted with the care of the lodge while the brethren refresh themselves. In this place it will be necessary to acquaint the reader how he may discover an entered apprentice by drinking with him in company. Take the glass with your right hand and draw it across your throat, either before or after you drink, and if an apprentice is present he will immediately take notice of it, by asking you some question in masonry, which you will readily answer from this book. If he asks the meaning of your doing that, you may whisper to him that it is the penalty of the obligation of an entered apprentice. From this answer he will proceed farther in his inquiry. The brethren having now regaled themselves they take their seats, and the master proceeds to set them on again, which is performed in the same manner as the calling off, with this difference, the warden proclaims, it is our worshipful master's pleasure that this lodge is called from refreshment to work. The junior warden lays down his column, and the senior sets his up. But as it often happens that the time will not permit for the fellow craft's lecture, they close the lodge, which is done after the same manner as that of opening. The senior warden declares it in the following words, It is our master's will and pleasure that this lodge stand closed till the first or third Wednesday in next month, according to the night the lodge is held. Then the master, wardens, deacons, secretary, etc., take off the ensigns and ornaments from their necks, and everyone is at liberty to depart or stay longer, everything of masonry is. Excluded, they talk of what they please, and sing for their amusement. I shall now proceed to the second degree of masonry, called the fellow crafts, that is, 
one who has served his time justly and lawfully as an entered apprentice, and desires to become more perfect in masonry, by being a fellow craft. But in most lodges at this time they are made entered apprentices and fellow crafts the same evening. The ceremony is the same, though they have different lectures, password, and grip, belonging to each.